The Druid is a mastery for the Primeless class in Last Epoch, and this is more involved and a little more complicated than other classes or builds for new or beginning players. However, we're going to take a look so that you can understand this class and you can play it from the start of the game even if it's your first character that you build. We're going to focus on leveling and getting to the end game. You can continue to use this build after this, but this will take you from level one all the way up to 75, at which you'll have all of your skill points, specializations, and the majority of your passive points. In the really early levels, things are going to be very straightforward. We'll really only have access to swipe, and then we'll eventually unlock Warcry. Once unlocking your master, you'll get the bear form, and this will actually give you additional abilities, but some of these overlap. For example, the bear also has swipe, and it gains all the specializations that you've put in a regular swipe as well. Roar is also another spell here or ability that's going to benefit from Warcry. For those two abilities, they're very straightforward. They're just going to do the exact same thing and synergize with the skills you're already using in your humanoid form. Maul is new, and this is going to allow you to slightly jump forward or kind of dash or lunge perhaps even, and this is going to actually slam the ground doing some AOE around it. Eventually this will get transformed into cold in this particular version of the build, but you can use it as physical and you'll see I've chosen to show the build at a point where I'm sort of transitioning from physical into the elemental damage. The reason I did this is because I really want to stress that this can be used from level one. You'll see it's capable of clearing all the content in the game solo, although some of the boss kills towards the later stages of the campaign will be a little bit slower, but still safe overall. Rampage is essentially a mobility tool and you can channel this to charge in a direction, although you can't change the direction. Eventually this ability will no longer have a cooldown, meaning you can use it to get to a destination, then pivot or change directions, and essentially you can just run through or sprint through the maps that way. Back in humanoid form, we'll have two abilities that don't transfer over while we're in werebear form. The first one is going to be spriggan form. Within the spriggan form passive or specialization tree, we're going to have access into getting vines and these are going to carry over into the entangling roots. So there's a lot of synergy there, but the two of these and their synergy gets unlocked later in the game due to how late entangling roots actually unlocks through the druid tree. The lower section of Spriggan form is going to buff Thorn Shield. Now we have additional benefit from this within the Druid passive tree. As we get Thicket of Thorns, this gives it a passive chance in order to proc when we're attacked and just adding to the survivability of this build. Overall, you have a lot of armor, really good mitigation, and shouldn't have too much of an issue surviving, provided you dodge the one-shot mechanics that basically take out any character build. The Spriggan as well does have the ability to cast four new spells on its own when transformed into that form. However, as mentioned, we're not really looking to go into this form and use the actives, so I'm not gonna touch upon those in this particular video, but if you wanna work this into your gameplay, by all means, feel free. The next ability is Entangling Roots, and this causes a large AOE around you when you use this. However, as mentioned, this skill also isn't something we're actively going to use, because what we can do is transform into bear form, and when we use the Maul ability, which wasn't synergized otherwise, it'll actually apply that Entangling Roots around you. So everything's going to kind of work in conjunction, and this particular leveling build is meant to stay in the bear form for as long as possible, if not forever, or the entirety of whatever map you may completing. So I will be transformed into lightning damage through this build, and that's going to help us consolidate all the different damage types. That way we can mainly focus on elemental damage in order to boost the overall output of the build. On top of that, we'll get shock, which will just again increase our damage, especially through something like Wrath of the Wild, that'll give us additional damage per stacks of shock on the target. And you can see with the fast attack speed of this build that we're going to be stacking that up and dealing large amounts of damage with just this one ability. On top of that, we'll be going for things like additional damage and additional health leech. This is going to add to our output and our survivability. Really important for this build so we can just face tank at the bosses. And we'll work our way down through Aspect of the Panther. This is going to allow us, again, some additional attack speed. Just overall, kind of a main theme here, where we're getting faster attacks. We're stacking debuffs on the target, which is then, in turn, increasing the damage we deal. Warcry will be converted to cold. Now on top of that, we're going to deal additional damage when the targets are frozen. This is really nice to bosses in which you can freeze them and then deal additional damage with your really fast attacks. In a different direction, we'll be applying Berserker, and this is going to allow us to gain the Berserk buff, which is going to allow us to again attack faster, deal more damage. Just a recurring theme here, right? We're trying to attack as fast as possible, apply debuffs, whether those be damage over time, or just means of allowing us to deal more damage, get as many hits in while the target's debuffed. By taking Apprehend, this is going to cause the Warcry to actually pull the enemies, and this will just bring them closer to us so that we can attack them sooner and maintain stacks of things that we've been building up on targets. The Werebear tree itself, you'll want to start off by going up and taking things that increase the amount of time you can stay in this form. When you first unlock Werebear, it's really short-lived, okay? You can barely stay in it. As you gain more levels, you'll be able to maintain that form longer, whether your mana pool increases or you just get additional points. These points can go into things like Ruthless, in which your Rage Decay will be slower. You'll also be able to gain additional Rage for hitting enemies. Over on the far left side of the tree, you'll be able to unlock the Lightning Conversion, and this is going to be key for our build. What we want to do is work our way all the way up to Unending Storm. Rampage no longer has cooldown. And then you'll be able to use it, change directions, and just traverse through the maps at an incredibly quick speed or through the main story quest if that's what you're doing. 
Sprig and Form, as mentioned, is really just there to kind of passively buff our character. First thing we're going to do is increase the amount of armor and duration that we get from the Thorn Shield, as well as just having it apply automatically, if possible, when this procs. The next thing we'll do is buff Vines, and that's going to allow our Entangling Roots to get some benefit and synergy from this as well. Lastly, we'll actually unlock the Cola Conversion, that way it can just benefit from the damage boost that we have and all the elemental damage on our gear. Entangling Roots will be unlocked fairly late in your character progression, at least in terms of leveling, and at this point you're going to be doing damage over time with it which will start off as physical as you get more points you'll want to work towards unlocking the vines so that you get some synergy from the spriggan tree lastly you'll work your way in the opposite direction and finally convert this to cold as well that way everything synergizes nicely together so let's go ahead and take a look at some gameplay and again this build is still transitioning we don't have all the specialization points so some of the skills deal physical some deal cold some deal lightning but you'll see it still has plenty of damage and plenty of survivability to get through even the maps as you begin the end game Rampage is a fantastic tool for traversing the maps. You can see a lot of the enemies will chase you and that allows you basically to gather them up nice and then you can just AOE them all down. It'll also continue to go as far as you like until you essentially hit a wall or need to change directions. You can Rampage in and you can follow that up with your Roar or Warcry. Again, those are gonna essentially be the same skill. They just have a different name depending on which form you're in. Then you can take out the enemies with your swipe. You can also use the maul in order to get the entangling roots, put a few damage over time abilities up, and use it as some additional damage. If you've been perusing other druid builds, you may notice there's a few differences between this build and a lot of the other ones you may have seen. A lot of the druid builds, at least towards the end game, will focus on dealing damage over time using elemental type effects. Perhaps even cold is the most popular. However, this build is going to have a larger emphasis on direct damage. The reason we like that is because it allows us to leech more health and it makes it a stronger boss killer. It's able to do all this while maintaining enough AoE to take everything down. And you'll see that the amount of damage you can do to a boss is actually pretty noticeable. Is it the greatest boss killer in the game? No, definitely not. But it has plenty of damage and you can essentially stand here and face tank everything. I Meaning you don't have to worry about the mechanics. You can just survive, heal yourself through any of the damage it deals. It makes for really easy gameplay. Here's another example where we have a bunch of high health enemies. Now they're mixed in with some lower health enemies as well. But you can see the fodder essentially goes down really quick. And this has some additional damage, helps you take down those high health targets as opposed to some of the other builds you might have seen. For the lower health mobs, you'll still be able to round everything up, use your war cry, one hit with them all, and just continue on. But if you want to take out those high health enemies as well, you've got the option with this particular version of the build. Rampaging forward, and again, we can choose to kill some of them, leave the higher health if we don't want to waste time swiping them. Choice is up to you, and depending on what you want to do, if you're going for max experience or just simply trying to get through echoes or the main story quest as fast as possible. The step-by-step -step guide of when and where to place your points can all be found in the link in the video description if you're looking for that information. A lot of builds will use Maelstrom, and although I do find that ability stronger at higher levels, during the leveling process I find Maelstrom a little bit weak, and that's the reason why I choose to admit it from this particular build. I do want to mention we're primarily going for main stats like Attunement, Elemental Resist, Strength, ways to regen or mitigate damage, whether that be through Health Leech, or even some mitigation through things like the Thorn Shield that we mentioned, additional health. So there's going to be a lot of tankiness or survival in this build with enough damage to clear all of the content. So where does this build fall short? And why did I mention roughly level 75 earlier? Well, the reason for that is because in the Druid's Tree, there's actually no direct way to boost this lightning damage. And there may be some minimal ways, but there's not enough. You can see here we can get some physical damage, some cold damage, some cold damage, cold penetration, and this is kind of a recurring theme, poison, etc. There's really not enough sources of additional lightning damage in order to kind of take this direct damage high enough to get to the high level corruption. It is, however, more than capable of completing the monoliths and starting the empowered monoliths, so by all means use it as long as you'd like, but it will inevitably fall off. This build is really designed to get you going from level one up until the point in which you transition into another build of your choice. That's it for this one, and I will absolutely update this with a build that I do choose to transition this character into so that you can see more of the endgame. And I'm starting to do that with all the builds as well, just pushing them to higher levels, higher corruption, and showing builds and where they progress. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.